I am not Japanese. And you can take that to the bank. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Tonight on the show, I'm going to teach you how to make omi rice. Are you gonna, are you gonna correct my pronunciation? Omu. I don't care. Omu rice is a Japanese dish. It's in the, it's like a genre of Japanese cooking where they adopted a Western food and made it their own. So it's part of the, the Yoshoku genre of foods. Kind of like Western friendly because there's things like ketchup, which the whole world loves ketchup. You can take that to the bank. I have never made this dish before, but I'm pretty sure I can do it. It's featured on a show that I like, Midnight Diner Tokyo Stories. Real chill out, wholesome show on a Netflix. I think part of why I like that show so much is that it reminds me of my days cooking in the kitchen. One guy, late at night, and it's just you're cooking small amounts of food for people who wander into the restaurant. A peaceful artisan's life, and I like that. So, without further ado, we'll get we'll get to making this. But basically it's fried rice with an omelet on top, and then this ketchup. The ketchup sauce. We're gonna prepare that. You can just use regular ketchup, but I keep seeing variations on this ketchup sauce, which is essentially some ketchup, some water, and then some other tomato product. But I'm gonna add tomato sauce to the ketchup, and really we're just gonna call it a day because that's the peak of culinary uh, artistry. I think if Japan didn't figure this out, nobody else would have. Although I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be so bold as to say this is actually Japanese because I don't know. I'm gonna just start with the sauce and the ketchup. And that a mix. I'm gonna warm it up and then put on the back burner. The recipes you're following came from Japanese people. Does that mean it's Japanese? I am making no comments on the identity of any foods or the authors of any recipes. Not even my own. All right, there's our sauce. That looks weird, but there it is. Okay, so let's start chopping some stuff. You can put many different meats in you know, omu rice. Ham, chicken, mixed seafood. Today we're doing chicken because I meant to get ham and I didn't. So I have some chicken thighs here. They're bone in, bone in, and bone in. And we're gonna chop it into small pieces. Don't really need the skin. Pull that off. Probably would have been easier just to get a boneless thigh, but it just was cheap as f so that's what I'm doing. Alright, my chicken's chopped. It is. I'm gonna cook it. If you were using like ham, you could skip this step. Ham's already cooked. But this chicken needs to cook. We'll put a little oil in that pan. This is vegetable oil. I'm gonna get a drink. I'm having a Sapporo. Without it, there's just the cruel silence. <laughs> I salted the chicken. And I'm gonna get a liquor drink, too. <laughs> We're gonna fry up this chicken. It'll also be nice to cook our rice in that. Probably like a pound of chicken. I'm kind of eyeballing this, because I gotta make five, five of these. So this recipe serves five. Okay, while that's frying, we're gonna chop some uh, veggies. I'm gonna start with this homegrown onion. This came from my garden. So I'm gonna get rid of the green stuff. This is a red onion. Probably like a white or yellow onion would be more appropriate, but it's the best looking onion I grew, so that's why I'm using it. You guys, you guys like my onion? Nice Thanks, Will. <laughs> this show could use more encouragement. So I'm gonna slice this up. Sorry in advance if anyone gets any onion paper. So this is probably like, you know, one small onion, maybe a half cup, maybe. So I gave a real lazy chop. Smelling nice. Chicken cooking is a, just a great smell. Everyone loves chicken. How can you not? Show of hands. Anyone here not like chicken? Not a hand was raised. Cutting some carrots. We're gonna do the uh, the old like quarter dice. You want your uh, ingredients pretty small so they'll cook fast. That's two carrots. Over here, back of the chicken. We're coming along. Let that go for another minute. Back over here on vegetable duty, we're gonna do some mushrooms. And I'm just gonna chop the hell out of them. These are cremini mushrooms, and they're actually kind of large for cremini mushrooms. That's like your basic brown. You can use any kind of mushroom, really. Chop the stems out and start slicing. You can slice your mushies, give them a twist, and continue chopping. Now remember that mushrooms shrink down considerably when you cook them. So even though it looks like a, just a shitload of mushrooms, it's probably not. Probably a fine amount. I think mushrooms are probably one of the easiest things to slice. Like they're nothing at all. I'm running out of room on this board. All right, chicken looks done. I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. They're in this bowl. And we got that nice chicken flavor, a little bit of oil. And we'll start with the hard bits, which is the onion. And if you want, you can go ahead and throw in most of the carrot too. That ain't gonna hurt nothing. Got a little mushroom in there, it's fine. If you are a vegetarian, and you're like the ovo vegetarian or whatever, and you eat eggs for whatever reason, because they're not yet animals, I guess, you could just use a shitload of mushrooms and not, not bother with meat. Yeah, crazy, that was like four mushrooms. It's just a shitload. So I'm using a pretty large pan because uh, I'm trying to make a considerable amount of uh, rice. We got a lot of people eating. And I am, in fact, 
fact, using leftover rice, a mixture of white and brown. And to prove it, I have the to-go containers. Look at that. That's from two days ago, I think. Three days, a week, last month. <laughs> Anytime you're making fried rice, old rice is superior, specifically because it crisps up better. If you wanted, you could use a wok. I feel like this pan is going to be just fine for what we're doing. I'm going to give this a uh, good, good cooking. So this will take, take a few minutes. All right, we got some nice translucent onions, a little bit of cook going on. I'm gonna go ahead and put my mushies in. Those cook down a bit. Might have to add a little bit more oil. Cook this all one up. Okay, imagine while while John's not filming, I'm doing this the whole time. Yeah, I'm cooking. Yeah. Whole time. See, look, I'm still going. <laughs> We're ready for peas. Peas nuts. Made a quarter cup of peas. You can have more peas if you like them. But go ahead and throw that chicken back in too. All right, so this is optional, right? If I had a bigger pan, like a wok, I'd just throw the rice in there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull all that shit out. I'm pull all this shit out, because I want the rice to fry nice. So that's that's that good good. This is the stuff that makes the rice tolerable to eat, okay? We'll heat that pan. We're gonna heat it up pretty high. Okay, there's our hot oil, high heat. It's rice frying action time. Okay, we got the dry rice. I right, spent some time breaking it up. Probably like two cups of rice if I had to guess. So we're gonna we're gonna fry that. I'm gonna salt it. That was totally unnecessary to do because I just realized I'm gonna put soy sauce in it. Okay, we're gonna put some ketchup on that rice. Ketchup sauce, I'm sorry, ketchup sauce. And a little bit of soy sauce too. This is uh, Kiko Man. All right, stir that up so it distributes the flavor. Once you get it hot enough, you can keep flipping the rice around, make it look fancy. And then it becomes uniform color, for the most part. So we're gonna fry this until it's, it gets a little crispy. And remember, you're gonna hide this under an omelet so it doesn't have to look good. I'm gonna keep frying it. I had all my shit bag. All my shit bag. So we're gonna mix it together to the power of flipping. And just like that, it looks like a shitload more food. Oh my, uh, oh my rice. Been watching that uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and every time they say Nani or Speed Wagon or JoJo, I'm like, oh yeah, I understood that. It's looking good. We never made regular fried rice on the show, have we? Well, this ain't it. I think it's salt. Maybe not enough soy sauce in that. All right, rice is done. It's omelet time. Now you can use many different things for your omelet, but one of them's gotta be eggs. I'm gonna put some butter in this pan. All right, so each omelet, depending on your crowd, needs to be two to three eggs. You got some hungry boys, maybe three eggs. You got some regular appetite boys, maybe two eggs. And everything I read included some kind of milk in these omelets. And they say it makes it fluffy. I don't know if that's true, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I would look like a real cool guy if I had the cooking chopsticks. I don't, I don't have those. So I'm gonna use conventional Western instruments, like my my hands. Use that splash of milk. Beat them eggs. I kind of think, let's start with the egg omelet. All right, it's my butter. Some people like a super clean, no brown omelet. Some people like a little brown on their omelet. I prefer them not brown. All right. I uh, read about many different methodologies of making these omelets. I have heard that sometimes this dish is enjoyed with fairly runny eggs. And in fact, the people who enjoy this type of dish often will eat raw eggs, undercooked eggs, slightly cooked eggs, and fully cooked eggs. They like the whole range. And that's a fact. So you can see here, I'm kind of moving the omelet around. Okay, so this is omelet, it's looking pretty good to me, so I'm just gonna hurriedly plate up the first omelet. You can see it's a little undercooked on the underside, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm basically gonna just scoop some of this rice up and form an in some kind of reasonable thing to drape these eggs on. Kind of like a football. All right. And then I'm gonna use my expert technique to try to drop this omelet upside down onto it. And actually, I don't think that's gonna work. So how do the f do they do this? They don't pour it on. Okay, so here's, here's one method. Just drop it right in. Drop it right into your omelet. The plate is now and then you can use your spatula, give it a little flip, and then you roll it better than I'm doing onto your plate, and it looks pretty nice. So here's omelet number one, very slight browning, and of course we'll garnish with some ketchup, which you can just give it a nice aesthetic blog. So here's omelet number one. Who will take this omelet? So I'm gonna I'm gonna make four more of these. I'm gonna try different methods. So maybe they'll all turn out the same, but just hold tight. This one's John's. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Give it a taste. It tastes great. And you know why it tastes great? Because ketchup and eggs taste f***ing good together. 
Who cares about anything else in this? Text barn eggs. I feel like I'm at camp. I'm at camp and I'm eating powdered eggs and the only way to get them down is to put some ketchup on them. How does it taste? Good, very good. It has a spot. That's really good. Well folks, this one came out pretty good. That's the end of the show. Thing about continuing to meme, continuing that shtick. Actually, I gotta stop for just one second. Just to say that sometimes when I like start saying something weird, or maybe a little uncomfortable. John yawns behind the camera in the same way that a dog yawns when they're uncomfortable at something that you did. I don't know why he does that. Are you, are you, are you sleepy or Sometimes. are you uncomfortable? Okay, so to end the show, if you enjoy this content, that's good. You can keep it to yourself if you want, but if this show ever does blow up, you can't do it anymore. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you share it, keep PGC small or it won't exist at all. Okay, bye. That's how you do it. Why I gotta say that every time? It is fine. That's how you do it. <laughs>